Hi, uh, I don't know how many months it's been since I've made a video, but here's one for you. Um, this is going to be a combination video. First, I want to talk about something that uh, recently happened to me, um, sort of recently. I've actually been dealing with some weird symptoms for about a year, a little over a year, so maybe actually a year and a half at this point since we're approaching the Christmas season, holiday season, um, started with some weird sensations in my legs, um, some like weird tingly numbness, um, I dealt with that for months, it would last a little bit and then kind of go away and then come back and each time it was a little different but the same, um, and I had an MRI done of my lower spine and they didn't see anything um, so I just dealt with it and then uh, come August or so my vision started going weird uh, not not leaving completely um, but uh, I would see sort of double like not quite double but um, just off like just sort of off and it started after about four days of dizzy spells, a um, couple times an hour, I would just get this weird rush that would um, sort of uh, I don't know, come and go for about 15 seconds or so. And um, but yeah, four days of that then led to my eyesight being wonky, and I figured probably time to see a neurologist since a uh, general doctor um, well my general doctor did refer me to a neurologist as I had figured he would um, and I had an MRI done of my brain and my upper spine uh, and well they found exactly what the internet told me they would probably find uh, you're not supposed to go on the internet and look at all the possible things it could be uh, but I did and it told me that I had MS um, yeah, it turns out that's exactly what I have um, I'm actually quite grateful for the fact that I'm an easy case to diagnose um, I'm the, the, the MRI was was very indicative of of MS and which means I didn't have to have a spinal tap I didn't have to go through months of doctors and crazy amounts of money to end up with this diagnosis it was very straightforward I found an MS specialist through my neurologist who agreed um, that we're going to attack this aggressively uh, from the start and so I've already been to the doctor, or to the, to the doctor, to the, um, I've already been to the infusion center for my first round of treatment. Um, I'm on a drug called Ocrevus, and, um, I guess so far so good. I haven't had any adverse reactions yet. Um, I've only had my first infusion. It was broken up into two different um, appointments two weeks apart um, and uh, yeah so far so good it's supposed to essentially not make it worse um, hopefully keep relapses from occurring so often uh, and yeah uh, since a couple months ago I've I guess maybe a month, a um, little over. I've been able to take walks again. I've been walking the dog around their neighborhood um, about two miles, and that's up from uh, it's at one point sitting on the sidewalk uh, in pain because my knee wouldn't let me walk more than like a quarter of a mile. Um, and I really enjoy walking, especially during these times these strange, uncertain times, um, going for a walk with the dog is, like, my biggest stress relief. 
getting out of the house and you know just looking at houses and neighborhoods and kids enjoying themselves and the pretty weather and I don't know uh, trees and flowers and stuff and pretty clouds it's uh it's cathartic getting out of the house and just sniffing some air that isn't your own for a while uh, it does wonders but yeah so that's what's going on and um, I just wanted to, to mention that. Uh, when you hear someone say that they have MS, multiple sclerosis, um, it's such it's such an unpredictable illness. It's different for everybody. Everybody's symptoms are different in some way. And it's not a death sentence. It's just a thing that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life. And it's, uh, it's not always a hindrance. With the right treatment, people can live full, productive lives for as long as they would without MS. Um, so I'm hopeful, and I have really amazing people in my life, and, uh, Eh, I'm just I'm not I'm not really sad about it anymore. It just it just is what it is and um Yeah, I uh I'm the same me and I can walk further distances now and uh yeah <laughs> life doesn't suck too much not not too much at all Another October has come to an end, and thus another round of Inktober drawings. Um, I realize that there's a lot of controversy going around about Inktober, um, and should we be supporting it, yada 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 yada. Um, but, uh, personally, I, I just want to do my thing, and uh, I really like the prompts, usually, that are included in, um, in the challenge. Uh, they're pretty diverse, and um, I'm not really into Halloween-y prompts. I love Halloween, but I'm not, like, I don't know, I don't want to draw witches and cats and stuff for a whole month. Uh, I like, I like, um the, uh, what's the word? I like the ambiguity of, of the Inktober prompts. Um, they really can be whatever you want. You can kind of morph them to your own tastes. Uh, but anyway, here we are. We've got, um, 30 new drawings because I didn't, I don't know, one day I just wanted to play catch up, and uh, so one of them got squished into the other day's prompt. Um, but anyway, 30 new drawings is pretty good. I'm pretty proud of them. Um, I'm going to put that off to the side so I'm not spoiling anything. 
Uh, this is the first one. The prompt was fish. Um, this is actually my least favorite one. Uh, just because it didn't, I don't know, it didn't scan in well. I, I enjoyed doing it more than I liked the end product. Um, it also, like, seemed sort of suggestive to me once I was done, but it wasn't supposed to be. It's just another fish. Um, choking on another fish's tail. Because that happens. Or something. Um, yeah. This is day one. Got some watercolor. I started out, really the only ink in this is the bubbles, the speech bubbles, and uh, the outlines. Uh, but the fish themselves were done in pencil because I'm a rebel. Day two was Wisp. Um, watercolor, and I think that's gouache for the clouds. Uh, I liked this one. It's very simple. Um, and I was just able to play with some watercolor. I got some, like, yellow a little... Uh, a little yellow in the background. Um, very subtle hints of it. And there's some dudes hanging out on wires. Uh, the wisp part was the clouds, which I had fun um, Google searching and uh, looking at different cloud shapes. Yeah, this was one of my favorite ones, I think. Day two. Day three was bulky. Um, for some reason, like, the image of a big fat carton of milk came to me. Um, <laughs> no idea why, but that turned into muscle milk. Uh, in the scanned image, I actually removed the circles in the background because I thought it was too busy. But yeah, he's sitting there not understanding why this giant 32 ounce container of muscle milk is so strong when he's just a tiny little curtain of skim milk. Mm -hmm. Day four was radio. Uh, I did a little drawing of a sign outside this coffee and oops sorry uh, coffee and bill place coffee and beer place um, down the street called radio and uh, they've got a big outside area with lots of picnic tables and stuff um, spent many a day day drinking there in my past not so much anymore, especially since of COVID. Um, you know, you know how it goes. But they do have outside seating, so maybe, maybe someday I'll go over there and enjoy a beer. But not today. Uh, day five was Blade. I immediately thought of grass. Uh, so this kind of turned into like a little marshy scene. Um, we've got a little crazy moon going on. Peering down at the grass blades. Uh, I used a metallic pen for the grass blades and they kind of have this weird like hairy texture almost. But uh not intentional, just the way the pen was. Mm hmm. I like this one too. And just watercolor in the background. Watercolor black. And the the moon was white pen white pen, gel pen, and uh black ink. Uh, day six was rodent. Uh, 
like millions of other people, the first thing that came to mind was a little rat or a mouse. So this guy was supposed to be a rat, but he definitely came out looking like a mouse, I think. Maybe if he was longer, or if he wasn't hunched, he'd look more rat-like, but... And he's just hanging out on a, on a ball, balancing himself like a, like a, like a boss. Uh, kind of reminds me of like a circus mouse, doing tricks. A little trickster. Uh, number seven was fancy. For a lot of these, I just got on Google and uh, put in the the word and maybe like another word and just kind of Google searched for ideas. And I found all these animals wearing suits. And I think they were actually paintings by somebody. Um, but yeah, that's where this guy came from. Fancy bourgeois. Duck face. He does sleep exceptionally well at night. And this was mostly watercolor ink for the background in my circles. But yeah, he's pretty... He's pretty proud of himself and all the things he does. Day... Eight, right? Was teeth. Um, again, I just googled teeth and I found an image of this duck wearing dentures that was from the uh, show Rugrats, the 90s, early 2000s uh, Nickelodeon cartoon. Now this duck somehow got a hold of the grandfather's dentures and was running around scaring these kids. Uh, but yeah, I found those teeth and I knew I had to draw them because they're just, they're just great. And I didn't want to make it a duck. I sort of started making it a duck, but then I wanted to be sure I was doing my own thing. So I just drew the teeth and then from there it turned into a shark. And, gah, I was giggling the whole time I drew this thing. <laughs> I love him. Day nine is slightly political, so forgive me. Um, this is one of two in the series that got a little political because... Just this, it's just the way things are right now. I gotta, I gotta draw what's on my mind, so... I had two crows. Little, little comic here. Uh, one crow trying to be Donald Trump. And the other saying he trusts him just about as far as he can throw him. T. He's got a little, a little bird wig. Mm-hmm. I'm really into making little, small comics, just kind of, I don't know, to get some, some dialogue off my chest or something. Uh, day 10 was Hope. <laughs> um, I don't really know what to do for this one, so I found a poem by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. He knows. He gets it. Day 11 was disgusting. And the most disgusting thing I can think of is a cockroach. 
um, at least that I had any sort of desire to draw. So I draw, drew some cockroaches, uh, plotting on how to terrify the humans. Um, and I don't know about you, but it riles me up when I see a cockroach just sitting on the wall doing nothing. I mean, the nerve. The nerve of cockroaches thinking they can just come into my home and sit and stare at me. Or, or stare at nothing and just exist. Like, how dare they? Gross. Day 12 was slippery, and I drew a little slippery snail. Um, lots of ink in this one. Uh, ink for the shell and the circles, which I then colored in with gold pen. Um, I really like this one. Once I got into this one, once I was done with this one, I realized how much fun I was having with Inktober. I'm pretty proud of the shadows outlining and giving depth to him. He's, uh, he's kind of popping out. I like him. Um, day 13 was dune. And the first thing that came to mind were, were sand dunes. I knew I could do something with that, so I played with shades of brown. Um, got some ripples in the sand here that I stylized as best as I could. Um, and a crazy moon in the background, some stars, and some shadowy mountains, majesty. Purple mountains, majesty. Um, yep, that's Dune. Day 13. Day 14 was armor. And I drew a little dillo. He says, fear me, but he's so cute. I tried to, tried to make him a little scary with red eyes, but I don't know. I guess in certain instances they have red eyes anyway. I don't know. Maybe that's just like photographs of of armadillos. But yeah, he's all watercolor and ink and the gold pen that I really love for his little spots. Even though armadillos don't really have spots, um, artistic liberties. Day 15 was Outpost. Struggled with this one, but eventually just drew a silhouette of like a ranger's outpost looking over a mountain. Uh, and had fun with the watercolor sky. I got some purple in there. Kind of dabbed at it to put some texture in it. Uh, and little metallic green trees. Uh, day 16 was Rocket. Pretty obvious here. This actually looks like one of my older drawings. I really enjoyed making Earth here. Just slopping together some green and blue and getting a little stronger on the green for the land masses if possible. Yeah, the rocket's just getting out of there. I do not blame him. These are crazy times, little rocket. You, you go. Day 17 was Storm. Um, I liked this a lot better before I started inking it. Um, 
I don't know, my, my hand was kind of shaky through this, but I guess it turned out okay. I just didn't want these lines to be so thick, and once one was thick, I just kind of had to roll with it and make the others thick. Uh, but yeah, I guess the first thing that came to mind was a stormy sea. So that's that. Day 18 was trap, and day 19 was dizzy, and I combined those. Little Venus flytrappy Mario uh, snappy dudes. Little combination of those. And then a bunch of drunk flies. Yeah, they're all hiccuping. Probably been hitting the fly booze, whatever that is. <clears throat> Let us. Um, day 20 was coral. I just googled some coral images and was working on my, my tree game with this guy. Uh, yeah, watercolor, and that was Posca pen for the little little clownfish guy. Simple little little sea drawing, sea life drawing. Not too complicated. Mm -hmm. Day twenty one was sleep. Uh, I ran out of the other size paper, and uh, so these are a little bigger, and I was kind of worried about that, but I seemed to get through my day, didn't seem to take a lot more time on these, but uh, anyway, day 21 is sleep, and I drew a little cockatiel having a nap, and he's dreaming about things, and and and, and a thought comes his little little bird mind that he's a good bird. He's very excited about this epiphany. All watercolor and ink for the background and outlines. It's pretty much the standard for all of my drawings these days. Watercolor. I'm enjoying like progressing my skill with layering watercolor and making shadows. Sometimes sometimes I screw it up, but more and more I'm putting down exactly what I intend and that's such a good feeling. Twenty two was chef. I just looked up chef jokes. Found this one. I thought it was pretty appropriate for uh, a cat holding a fish. <laughs> fish chef. You're gonna die, he says. Uh, day 23 was rip. I don't really know where I got this idea. It just kind of came to mind. A dog. I guess I wanted, I was thinking of dog teeth and then like fell down a Google rabbit hole as I do and thought of how dogs hate vacuum cleaners. Oh, Zeus hates vacuum cleaners. I don't know why. What is it about vacuum cleaners that's so awful? And then you see those other dogs that enjoy having their bellies vacuumed. It's it's uh, it's one extreme or the other. Twenty four was dig. I don't know. He's not digging much, but he did. At one point, he did. He had to dig up that sand or like scoop it around to make his sand castle. 
Yeah, he's a very talented crab. Look at that. Look at that sandcastle. Oh. Such talent. Twenty-five was Buddy. And I thought of Buddy Holly, so I looked up Buddy Holly lyrics. Uh shoot, what's the name of the song? It's so easy to fall in love, that's it. Two penguins being cute for each other. And I lay it on the yellow pretty thick in the background so it's like this nice brown or nice brown. Nice yellow uh Yeah. Whatevs. I like it. 26 was Hyde. I actually worked on this guy while I was at the infusion center. Uh, I got the watercolor bits out of the way. But did some pen work at the... while I was getting infused with medicine. But yeah, he's uh... He's not amused. He is, but he isn't. He amuses himself. I guess. Twenty-seven was music. That's... I like this bird a lot better than this bird. I struggled with shadows. But, it's okay. I was thinking I might make like a, a banner of some sort for some social media platform somewhere with these guys. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just like cut it. I don't know. Or maybe it's just great the way it is and it'll take some time to like it. But I do like this bird. She's, she's sassy. Day 28 was float. Just looked up floats and there were a million flamingo floats and flamingos have a nice shape, etc. Explanation. Uh -uh. I was gonna do some colors with these waves, but then the watercolor, I think this was like two layers of watercolor and it like gave me this weird cool pattern so I just kept it It's pretty neat I don't know how that happened but it did so I just left it it's nice when that happens please no day 29 was shoes and the first thing that came to mind was that video from 2010 if any of you remember it was long ago days of early YouTube and stuff. Uh, the Oh My God Shoes video. If you haven't seen it, you should look it up because it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's like a cross-dressing rooster. He's very happy with his purchase. So it was this little mouse. Day 30 was my second political one. The word was ominous. Uh, it's our lovely president stepping off of a plane, the silhouette of him, and he's coughing into the world. Yep, yep, yep. And the last day was crawl. And I just wanted to draw something with lots of legs. So a black widow of all insects came to me. And this little cockatiel. I've been really enjoying drawing cockatiels lately. In the background. 
I was thinking while drawing another one flying down and saying, no, it's a trap. But, I don't know, ran out of time or something. Or just didn't want to. But yeah. I really enjoyed doing this web. I listened to like two hours of Kit Boga videos. If you haven't checked out Kit Boga, you should. He's a he's a YouTuber uh, slash Twitch streamer that um, calls scammers and scams them. <laughs> he's a really cool dude. Uh, but I can listen to his videos for hours. It's just like something to keep on in the background and work too because it's not something you have to watch you can just listen but anyway yep I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, maybe incorporate this line this type of line work into more things because this was so enjoyable but yeah that's Inktober um just like last year, I'm just kind of sitting here like, what do I do now? I don't know. Um, I've actually drawn a tree. I've done one thing since it ended. Did this guy. Um, on Halloween, Rory and I watched Sleepy Hollow. And I've never actually sat down and watched it all the way through, I guess. But I saw this tree and I was like, oh! <gasps> It's so beautiful. So I drew it and played with gouache and stuff. And then drew the lines back in with uh, with my pen. I, I have no idea when the camera just stopped. So uh, yeah, mm, let's pick up possibly where I left off. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I just need to keep, keep my eyes open, keep going on walks and stuff and uh, come up with ideas that way, but how you get spoiled with with these drawing challenges and like I don't know you have a direction given to you instead of just a blank page with no ideas in your head but uh, anyway thanks for stopping by and uh, I'll see you in the next video have a have a happy day bye